Hello and welcome to another tutorial for Excel users. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to use the filters with Excel and obviously they come in very handy when you're working with lists as we have here. So to activate the filter, nice and easy, just click anywhere in the table that you want to apply the filter to, go to the data menu, go to the filter option there, you get a little fly out menu and choose auto filter. Now as soon as you do that you get these little drop down arrows appear at the top of each column next to each column heading and you'll also notice straight away that the arrows in some cases have chopped off the label and we can fix that very simply in this case I'm going to select A, B, C, D, E, F, G just the the column labels at the top there and then double click between any one of those labels and it automatically expands each column to fit the drop-down arrow and the label. Okay, so let's say for example we just want to filter onto a particular date and see what happened on that date. So all they need to do is click on the drop-down and choose the appropriate date. For example, the 10th of May. And I can see it was a very quiet day. I only rented out two movies. Now, when the filter's been applied, the color or the shading of the arrow changes. Now, in Excel 2003 I think it's not very clear when you have the filter active. Now if you can see that, you know which filter is active, it's very simple just to click on the drop down arrow and then choose the All option and that will reverse the filter. However if I just reapply that filter, go to the 10th of May again, if you're not sure where the filter is applied you can simply go to the data menu, come down to the filter option again and choose Show All. Now when you click Show All it basically undoes the filter if you like or removes the filter and shows you the full list again. Okay, you can also filter on multiple columns simultaneously and I'll give you an example of that by clicking the date option again or the date drop down and I'll choose the 18th of May and I can see that I've got four rentals. I can choose let's say the format, maybe I'll choose Blu-ray and then I can choose the customer, I'll choose Lisa and I can see what she took out on the 18th of May for instance. And again to reverse that simply click the data menu, filter and show all. I could also go through each of the filtered columns one by one and remove the filter but in this case using the show all option is much quicker. Now I'm going to switch to another list here just to show you another couple of things you can do with the filters. This is a list of uh, the most successful movies by ticket sales rather than revenue so it might be a more accurate reflection of a uh, film's popularity. Obviously some of these films were made when uh, television had hardly got going so you'd imagine a lot, lot more people have been to see those movies. But anyway, that's another story. So let's apply the filters here then. So again, simply click anywhere in the table, go to the data menu, click on filter, auto filter and again that applies the filter drop downs. Uh, the millions has been chopped off again so I can just double click between the B and the C there to expand that column. And here there's a couple of things I'd like to show you. The first one is if I click on the drop down for my tickets column I have an option here that says top 10 and if I click on that we get this little additional dialog box here. Now I have the choice of choosing top or bottom 10. I'm going to stay with the top 10. You can also reduce it to the top 5 or 4 or whatever or equally increase it to the top 15. I'll leave it as the top 10 just for now and you have an option here of uh, the top 10 items by absolute value or the top 10 by percentage value. Again I'm going to leave it just as items here for now. Click OK and there we have the top 10 by ticket sales. Now you'll see the order has been ordered not by lowest to highest because they're all jumbled up. So if I wanted to then go and sort that, I'd need to click in the list and then sort it either ascending, which is low to high, or descending, which is more accurate in this case, which is the highest value to the lowest value. So I click descending and it puts them in order of ticket sales and shows me the top 10 most popular. Again, I can undo that simply by clicking, well, I can click the drop down on millions and go to show all. and just to show you the opposite again, top 10, this time we'll go to the bottom 10, click OK and those are the out of the list I have which is about 100 or so movies. These are the ones that performed less well 
and you'll see uh, looking at the title of there some quite successful films okay so I'll remove the filter one more time again just scroll up choose all and this time I'm going to go back to the drop down for my ticket column and choose the custom option this gives me a lot more flexibility as you can see I've got a few options here now I have an option here to choose how I want the criteria to be set so I can have something that's equal to a particular value greater than less than and so on so let's say for example I'd like to choose is greater than and as my value my target value I'm going to set 150 in other words I'd like to see all the films that have sold more than 150 million tickets and then click OK and there's my list as you can see filtered again it's not sorted in the order that I want to see them so again I need to click in that column choose descending order highest to lowest and there are my films that sold more than 150 million ordered by most popular to least popular okay again just click on the drop down and reverse that by choosing show all again come back to the drop down choose custom and this time I'm going to have a couple of options and I'm going to have the list show simultaneously my top few and bottom few and I'm going to do that by first of all clicking the top bit and choosing greater than and so I'd like to see that list of more than 150 first of all and then I'm going to choose the OR option and this time choose less than and I'd like to see any films that have sold less than 100 million tickets and there are a few on that list I think so click OK there and you'll see if I sort them in order my lowest to highest slightly longer list but this time I see my top ones above 150 and my bottom ones below 100 anything between 100 and 150 is missing and so that's a way I can see highest and lowest or best and worst simultaneously and skip all the stuff in the middle now I'm just going to remove that filter one more time okay and then go back to the custom option now I'm not going to go through any more examples here but you, if I just click on that drop down list you can see the different examples you have okay so you have uh, a few options to play about with I would recommend you experiment with those and see how it works uh, and best fit it to your situation there's one more thing that I will show that might be useful if I just cancel that and come back to my original list of rentals now if I just click on my drop down for movie go to custom again and this time click on the drop down come right down to the bottom of that list and choose contains I'm just going to type in the word space then click OK and that filters down my 2001 rentals and it only finds those because it's got the word space in obviously now I know that I could have clicked on the drop down there and simply chosen that but that's just illustrating a way that you can pick things out of a list that have got a particular pattern of text or a particular pattern of numbers if you want to so if I just click on the drop down and show all again so there's a few examples of how you might use the filter option uh, now if I want to remove the filter from the list all I need to do is click anywhere in the list again go to the data menu come to filter and choose auto filter and the filters are removed so that concludes this quick look at using filters on your Excel lists I hope you found that useful thank you for watching and see you next time